Hello, and welcome back to Kira's Workshop. It is time for a new Kira's Workshop conceptual challenge. I love astrology, did you know that? And I'm not an astrology expert, and I'm not Walter Mercado, even though my last name is actually Mercado. But no, I'm not related to him in any way. But I am very passionate about astrology, and the zodiac, the stars, the future. I bet that by now that we all know that there are a lot of zodiacs. Some of them even have sacred trees, like the Celtic one, or star groups like the Egyptian. But today we're sticking with only three, the ones that are the easier to portray as organic beings. For this challenge, the rule was very simple. Create a chimera, mixing your signs from the Western, Chinese, and Mayan zodiacs. So I was born in April 30th of 1990. That makes me a Taurus in the Western zodiac, horse in the Chinese, and a fox in the Mayan one. Kind of a very cool mix, if I may say so. For the base, I went for the obvious, having a horse as my sign. That's Avia Trotter from Monster High, and a spoiler alert, there are a lot of Avia Trotters in this collab. I prefer off-camera, and I want my creature to be gender neutral, so I made its chest flat, and also sanded down the complete body. I'm using Avia's hands, but I want to modify them. So first, off with the fingers. I love watching them fly away, and this footage was the lamest ever. Next, with my hand drill, I'm making a hole where I want my armature to be. And by armature I mean just wire. Like a piece of wire. I'll push the wire with my pliers. And then bend it to pose the new hands. I'll repeat this with the rest of the fingers. And then I'll begin modeling the face with a two-part epoxy clay. I must tell you, I'm so bad at molding. I don't use hot glue to stiffen the head and I never add a wire armature. I just start molding and pray to Jesus. I want my chimera to be anthropomorphic, but I still want to keep the animal proportions on the head, or at least try to be as close as possible. That implies making the snout very long. Now I'm adding more clay on the eyes area, and try to blend the edges very smooth. Now, with the tip of a brush, I'm creating the eye sockets. And then make the eyes that are just small spheres of clay. That's the derpiest thing I've ever made. Now, I'll mold the eyelid with a small piece of clay. And blend it upwards with my nail file. Do the same with the bottom lid. I began doing the right eye, but symmetry left the building. So I removed everything and decided to make it blind. So I just need to punch the eye socket again. Now I'm adding the lip separation line. And I know, this is the ugliest thing you've ever seen, but bear with me, we'll get there, I promise. It looked like it had double chin, so I'm trying to flatten the area. To be honest, this looks more like a pig right now. I concentrate on making the basic shape, but sanding everything down will make this sense. I didn't remove Avia's ears to use them as a base, to mold the fox ones. And we did it! To be honest, I can't believe I managed to rescue this. And also, to incorporate Taurus on this, I made this pair of horns. Now I'm using my two-part epoxy glue to glue on the horns on the face. And... Well, apparently this stuff dries out. So I glue the horns with my super glue instead. Such a cool profile! Next step, I'm giving the complete doll two layers of white gesso. Honestly, I never primed anything before, but now I'm a believer. Primer really makes a great difference. Who knew? Well, apparently everyone except me. Now, with a stiff brush and some brown paint, I'll start giving very light brush strokes to resemble hair. 
I'm doing this to blend it with the yarn fur later. I'm also using white in case the brown ones and thicker than expected. Now that I'm thinking, I don't know why I didn't cover the holes from the chest with epoxy clay. But whatever. I need to add a few details on the face before furring this up. First, with a terracotta pencil, I'll draw the waterline. And with brown, draw the nose. Every scar has different pigmentation. So I'm using pink and red pastel on the blind eye. And with black, add more depth. To make it a little more realistic, add wrinkles with black pencil. And then red pastel to color the ears. Paint the left eye with black acrylic. And also the nose. And paint the lips black, like most animals have. Add some shade with pastels. And of camera, I added varnish on the eyes, nose, and mouth. Next, I'm painting the horns black. And also the hooves. And then, to make them look mystical, I painted them with copper metallic paint. This also made a great contrast with the pale fur. And well, I also painted the hooves. And now for the part that I've been running from, the fur. I have this beautiful beige yarn that I use every time. And I glue it directly all over the body. And, well, while I'm doing this, let's talk about my zodiacs. I want to see if the three of them are similar in some kind of way. So, Taurus, represented by the bull. This sign belongs to the Earth element and has feminine polarity. Ruled by Venus, Taurus is known for their passion, dependability, and elegance. Pleasant, loving, and honest. They have a strong desire of extravagance, contentment, and great things. They are prone to anger, but once enraged, it can be terrifying. Horse, Chinese zodiac. Popular, energetic, and confident, they are independent, eager to try new things, and bored by routine. They hate being controlled, rarely listening to advice, and prone to instant mood swings and hot temper. Fox, Mayan Zodiac, born to give itself to others. They have a magnanimous and charitable spirit, defenders of justice, protective and loving. The fox is peaceful, rarely gets angry, but once you exceed its limits, it can become a big bag wolf. So, Taurus and Fox are very similar to each other. The horse, on the other hand, mm, it's a complete opposite. But hey, at the end of the day, you can't have calm without chaos, right? Everything needs to be balanced. And you can tell me that I don't have patience after watching the amount of fur I just glued to this little being. And a small side note, I also glue on fur into the blind eye, like real animals do. Once I got all the body covered except for the face, I applied a decent amount of glue and proceed to add fluff. I am so happy with how it looks. I also added a tail that I made with yarn webs. Next, with a thin marker, I'm adding tiny dots. And use nylon thread for the whiskers, that you can barely see. I'll glue them on top of the dots I made earlier. Forgot to mention that I covered the wire of the fingers with hot glue. And to make the color story cohesive, I'm painting the claws the same way the horns and hooves. First with black, and then the copper. And my astral chimera is finally complete.
This was a journey, but at the end everything paid off. I see it as a mysterious and mystical forest being that once got attacked by a human, and because of this it decided to hide away from humanity. And now, time to showcase the work of all those who decided to participate in this collab. Zoe Bird Costumes, Mitch Lloyd, Lucas Alban, M. Narcissus 28, Heart Horror Dolls, Doll Cottage Customs, Miss Yuzi, Cat Oak, Must Laboratories, Saturn Dreams Art, Latias Libra, Josephine Creatures, Big Hands Repaints, Harley's Dollhouse, Gamer Arts, Estuche de Chucherías, and Cloud Dolls. Thank you all for participating in this project with me. I love all your creations, and I was truly blown away by the creativity. Let me know in the comments if you enjoy these conceptual collaborations, and also tell me what do you think about my Bob Fox horse. It doesn't have a name, so suggestions are welcome. And well, that's up for today. But as always, don't forget to support the workshop by liking this video. Remember that sharing is caring, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next time. Kira out.